Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay, so today uh, interest rates shot up. Woohoo! Based on <laughs> yeah, woohoo! <laughs> based on the Fed saying tomorrow, which is Wednesday, that they would potentially raise the core interest rates 0.75. Right. Which is more. So what's baked in is like two percent of total raises, but now we're getting up into like 1.25 percent of total raises, maybe one and a half percent. And that doesn't leave much room more. So mortgage rates is sort of are, are sort of leading that. They're trying right. to estimate that, right? Right. So of course this is because uh, the core inflation rate came out uh, last week, and that's like eight point six percent, which is hideous. Yeah. Um, well, the so, core was so, six, and the total was like eight point six. Right. Which so, was higher than the previous month. Right. So <clears throat> the Fed is trying to use um, interest rates as a way to moderate inflation. Um, some of us think that that ship has sailed, but that's another that's a discussion for another time. <laughs> okay, so today what we're going to talk about is how interest rates affect affordability, and we pick pick some specific numbers that are pertinent to what's going on now. Right. Okay, so there are these people out there who are saying, wait till home prices fall and buy it when homes are cheap. And if you're buying cash, and we did a whole video on this where we showed the you know, how you can't time them. I think it's called like, you can't time the market. Mm -hmm. But what we did is we picked an exact example of something that's pretty pertinent based on buying a house, say maybe a year, six months ago, uh, or a year ago, and then buying in the future maybe, mm -hmm. right? Okay, right. so I'll put this slide up and we'll talk about it. Okay, so here's the scenario. You bought a house for 400,000, and let's say for all intents and purposes, 400,000 was the purchase price you got a loan. It was 100% loan, okay? Even though you probably aren't able to do that. This is just for the example. Um, you got a 2.75% interest rate, which would not have been unheard of a year ago. And your monthly payment, 1633, that's principal and interest. So we're doing these the same to hold everything con mm -hmm. constant here, right? Now, let's say, based on current interest rates, 5.75%, you wanted to buy a house with the same monthly payment of 1633. Mm -hmm. It's it's two hundred and seventy nine thousand nine hundred bucks. So the market would have to go down thirty one percent. So that's a hundred and twenty thousand dollars difference in purchase price. That's a lot of house. That's a lot of difference. Yeah. So and we don't know. Like nobody knows what interest rates are going to be two, three, four years from now. We could go back up to now. Remember the long term median rate is seven point six percent. We're still at five percent, seven five below that. Obviously, we're heading toward that. This is definitely going to cool the housing market off. Mm -hmm. We had a housing market going like that. Now it's going like that. We actually have a mid market update. We're going to air probably tomorrow. So um, subscribe, and then that way when that mid market update, uh, mid month update comes out, you'll be able to. To see that, but we want to talk about this one. Right. Well, so just kind of to your point. So if you are interested in that, please subscribe and hit the notification bell because mm -hmm. that way you'll get a push notification when that mid market um, update comes out. Okay. So there's there there's a lot of people have very general um, beliefs about how real estate works and how the the uh, economics affect the real estate market. They're in some in some ways they're very sophomoric, and they're based on how things work in the past. We know that this is a new market with different underlying fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Okay, but okay, we'll use the example of someone who's out to buy a five hundred thousand dollar house, and a year ago they decided to put it off for a year, and now they're like, well, now we have to move because whatever reason we we just, we have to we have to buy a house. We're going to buy a house, right? So they go to the lender and they find out. Interest rates are higher and their payments are up, and it's going to be another 600 bucks more than it would have been a year ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. The average person out there is like, well, they're just they're out of the market, but they're not actually out of the market. No. How do how does this work then? What do they have two choices? What are, what are their two choices? Well, you know, their choices are not to buy anything uh, because they can't afford the extra six hundred dollars, or to uh, lower their sights a little bit, right? Lower their ask a little bit. So if maybe you were going to buy a five hundred thousand dollar house before. Maybe now you're buying a four hundred thousand dollar house, which is all fine and good, uh, except all those people that have been looking for that four hundred thousand dollar <laughs> house. Now they're kind of butting up against these people uh, that are have lowered their sights from five hundred thousand to four hundred thousand. 
Uh, and yes, you know, the argument can be made that the people who were looking at 400,000 are looking at 300,000 and so on. But at some point, you kind of see where these, where these two are going to meet and they're going to butt heads. And you're going to get to this point where whatever that market price is, where you've got two, um, two competing interests in this, you've got the people who were there in the first place trying to buy the house, and you've got the people who have lowered their sights trying to buy the same house, which is um, causing obviously an issue for that price point, whatever that, that happy number is, where it's, it has more buyers than it can accommodate. I mean, we're already in a market where we have more buyers than we have inventory uh, in spite of more houses coming on the market and in spite of um, less, you know, l less offers per property. So maybe we don't have 12 offers per property. Maybe you ha we have two or three offers per property, but that's still multiple offers per property. So that's still uh, multiple buyers for one property, which can only be sold to one set of buyers. Yeah, let's put this in perspective. If, the, if this 3% interest rate change in a year had happened during a normal healthy market, it would definitely put downward. Like, remember, normal healthy market prices go up 4.7% on average year over year. It's a normal market. That's happened. That's like your normal market. We'll call it most of the last decade, most of the last 12 years. Home prices went up at that rate. And it was pretty, it was up, there were ups and downs, but it's mostly this nice, steady increase in value and pretty healthy market. That clearly would put a downward pressure, if not flattening it out, but declining the market. But we're, we actually have this super hot market that we've been coming out of. It's tons of people are buying real estate. They're trying to hedge against inflation. Um, and they're finding it a better investment than the stock market. Interest rates are still historically low. So exactly what this is going to, Bring, it's not going to crash the market because every other time interest rates have gone up 3%, market never crashed. Matter of fact, the one time markets crashed, interest rates were going down the entire time because the economy was starting to do poorly and they were trying to drop, chop interest rates to keep uh, the economy from going into a recession. And actually what happened was, you know, the housing market caused a recession. Right. So um, what else? Well, so what, you know, what we want to emphasize is that we're not saying that home prices are going to keep going up like this. No. We're not saying that at all. Okay, we are saying, yes, absolutely. You know, look, interest rates going up are impacting the housing market. Uh, inventory going up is impacting the housing market. But what we are saying is that we do not see an impending crash of the housing market. We're seeing a leveling off. We're seeing a more normal market, but we're not seeing a crash. The people who are seeing, uh, who are saying that, that they're expecting a crash, you know, look at what their incentives are. We were, we actually, we were watching a video together of somebody who, you know, they say the most sincere form of flattery is plagiarism. And somebody did uh, a video uh, that we, we happened to have watched and they used the exact same words I used in the video. They used Todd's exact charts in the video. Uh, and he finished up his video saying, list with me now before the housing market crashes because I'm telling you it's crashing. Uh, we're not saying that, okay? You want to list your house with us? Great. We, we welcome the business, but yeah. we're not saying that the housing market's going to crash. Sell the house for, for the right reasons. And kind of to Todd's point, keep in mind that let's say that you have a $500,000 house and let's say that you're, you believe the market's going to crash or you believe that this is a good time for you to sell your house because you need peace of mind, that the house is sold, but your, your next house won't be ready for nine months or a year and you're going to need to rent, and maybe you're going to need to move twice. Well, what's the cost of that? So let me kind of give you just a quick uh, quick and dirty example. Uh, $500,000 house, um, you have to rent uh, for the next, let's say, 12 months. Uh, a comparable house, let's say, is $3,000 a month. 3000 times 12 months, $36,000, easy math. Uh, let's say that you know, you've got to move once anyway, but let's, uh, let's kind of estimate the cost of the additional move at $4,000, which is probably on the low end, but you know, I just like easy math. Uh, so now we're talking about $40,000. So it's costing you $40,000 to sell the house now as opposed to a year from now when you actually need to sell it because the kids are graduating and you can move to wherever you want to move to, right? So now what that means to you is that if you sold your house today for $500,000 or if you sold your house a year from now for four sixty, dollars it's actually the same money. But you got to be in your house the whole time and you only got to move once. 
So how much does the market need to fall before it makes sense for you? You know, in this instance, you know, the market would have to fall 10% or more before it would make any sort of sense uh, for you to sell your home now as opposed to a year from now when you actually need to sell the house. Now, what will interest rates be like a year from now? You know, I don't know, but we do know that historically interest rates tend to uh, back off about 18 months from when they started to, to go up. So that may coincide with interest rates starting to go down. So it's just so, something to kind of keep in mind. Everybody's situation is unique, so you have to kind of put pencil to paper and figure out what makes sense for your situation. Uh, and, you know, there is an economic value to peace of mind. So if you say, you know what, I understand all that, but my peace of mind is more valuable, I completely agree with you. I think peace of mind is completely valuable. It's a legitimate reason. And it's not always about what pencils on a spreadsheet. But you do have to make an individual choice and as far as the market crashers out there who are just jonesing for a listing, we're not those people. We are very happy to help you sell your home, but we're not saying, you know, sell your home today uh, because the sky is falling. Um, here's another option. Don't, if you don't have to sell the house, don't sell it. If it's, if you paid 300 for it and you got a 2.75% interest rate, your payment's 1300 bucks and you probably can get two to three thousand dollars in rent. Just rent the thing out for a year or two and wait for the you know the market to get better. But the bottom line is you're not forced to sell. Just this thing where there's people out there that believe as soon as the market starts falling, people become forced, like it triggers like some you know market thing where, oh my gosh, there's a call on my house. I have to mortgage now, I'm forced to sell it. And you're never forced to sell. Like you would be dumb to sell your house if you had a two point. Like there are actually people who have sent me put in the comments. I hated paying off my house because it was a two point seven five percent, but I came into some money and I used it to pay off the house. Or I sold the house because I was moving and I bought another house and I hated giving up that loan at you know a really low interest rate. And right. and even though and some of them actually like they sold. They sold and bought now, and they're having to pay at five, six percent, and they're very unhappy. But they had to move, or they wanted to move into a much bigger house, and there was for some reason they couldn't rent. Like they needed the equity to go mm -hmm. to the next house. Right. So you know, like I said before, every situation is unique. So take a look at what makes sense for you. Um, if you like the video, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, share it, and we will see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.